Hi everyone, I'm going to show you um, how to set up the Carlsbro CSD600 kit. We've got it brand new, so any kind of issues or uh, exciting new findings, we're all going to find out right now. So let's go and take a look. So this is how it comes inside the box. Inside, everything individually boxed. So we'll get all this stuff out and uh, start putting it all together. The big box contains lots of separate little boxes and it appears that you've got the various different pads, hi-hat stand, accessories, the pads and the module itself in the bigger box. The smaller box, this side, actually contains the frame and the entire loom already, it appears, threaded through the, the rack. So everything is all in here, which should really speed up getting this thing set up. You've got your symbol poles in this box in here. So, let's start putting it all together. As we uh, mentioned, the rack is already assembled, already got the loom hardwired into the rack. That could pose a few issues further down the line if uh, some of the cables get damaged. And I would guess it's also going to cause an issue when it comes to if you wanted to modify the rack in any kind of way. So we'll uh, come back once we've started putting everything on. When you first get the rack out, some of these bits do seem quite loose and a bit uh, off uh, kilter. But it appears that on all the joints you've actually got drum screws to uh, tighten it all up. So hopefully that will make the entire frame a bit more sturdy, a bit more stable once you've got it all set up. Fingers crossed. The one thing that concerns me about the uh, pad, you can feel inside it the actual area where your beat is hit. So my twin pedals are probably going to be either side of it. So I'll double check with the uh, manual and see what it says about that in a moment. Uh, right, so we've got a 14 inch ride. And just in case you're not sure, it does actually say on the back. See why 14 inch. The ride symbol, from what I've seen, it's chokeable and it's got an um, edge, bow, and bell triggers as well, which is helpful. Uh, so I'll just hastily pop this into position. in case you're not sure, take the felt off because inside there is a ridge which corresponds with the pad there and you can adjust that so you can make sure which angle it goes. So far if I had to pick one criticism of it I would say that these symbol arms and these plastic clamps seem a little bit cheap but in the grand scheme of things I'm not complaining too much. Uh, you've got an A and a B socket on the ride, so I'm assuming hidden in this somewhere there will be dual connections for the ride. Yep, so everything's labelled already to make things a bit easier. Ride A and ride B. So I'll not plug anything in until we've actually got things where we want them. Yeah, exactly 
So, let's mark that one here. Although, interestingly, these are marked as crash mines. Well, that's good to know. believe that these crashes or crash rides have the same functionality as the actual uh, proper ride symbol. These are the actual drums themselves. These are the actual pads, yeah. Interestingly, these are 10 inch and these are both marked as snare. does it come with? Uh, it's the five piece so you've got two rat toms, floor tom and a snare drum. Now ah, I see. So what we've got here this one is marked as a eight inch drum tom. Now as is the other one as well. Now just out of interest. So I'm assuming then, looking at this, both of these snare pads only have one input. So unlike the ride where it has an A and a B, these snares only have one input. But with them both being marked as a snare, I'm assuming they're interchangeable, which would mean then you've got the same functionality on both, presumably. Uh, I'll just hastily whip these into position. So with you, depending on your playing height, etc., you're going to have to do a little bit of fiddling with regards to the on, with your floor tom. You've got a little bit of room with your L bracket here with that. But then, if you need it any higher or any lower than that, you're going to have to drop this whole bar. I've already dropped this bar once because uh, it comes at the same height as the uh, the left hand bar there. To drop it, it's extremely easy and straightforward. You've just got one drum screw at either end, which just holds it tight. But again, with it being plastic, just be very, very careful about over tightening it because that will soon break and then you're screwed. But, uh, focus on.
have several meshes. For the price point, getting a full kit with full mesh heads, four symbols, really is a bargain. Last box. For the people who watch this and then they're probably going to be going looking at completely superfluous things like using these scissors to open it, so if a box cuts it or cutting towards myself. I am an adult and I take that responsibility on my own head. Ah, right, so that's how they do it. So you don't get two separate symbols or anything behind that. bottom there, which has got its own input, and then you've got the top. The clutch is already fitted, and what I'm going to do is just remove this clutch. on you can tighten it up and then tighten it like that. Makes it look a bit easier. There we go. Better. So interesting. Without checking the instructions, I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a specific orientation for that. But we'll come back to it. Now, just re fit the clutch. For anyone that's actually watching and doesn't know this clutch, belt, symbol, like with all the other symbols. You know, the oval shape recess in there, so I'll pop that in first. And then, to turn the clutch again, tighten it through. With any of this, I wouldn't suggest tightening it too much until you're absolutely sure everything's as it should be. So the last, only thing that's left is the module box. A bit extra care on opening this. this. module. It's very nice. I like the fact that you've got individual controls for the volume of the uh, pads, the symbols. Um, all the criticism with this 
is that uh, you can't, well, you, as you get it, it is already expanded. You've got the additional uh, uh, crash on there. Tom 4. So it looks like you could expand it and put an additional tom on it if you wanted. Um, but it all comes through one multi-core connection, which is personally, I think, the biggest drawback for this. Whereas on like the old Rollins, I used to get an individual wire for each drum. You could just replace them if one of them got damaged. Whereas with this, if you've got a problem, it's either going to be a really, really tricky repair, or you're going to have to bite the bullet and replace the entire loom. Let's see what's come off. finger tighten these otherwise we'll probably spend two or three hours trying to find the correct socket size you should never have the one that you want basic shell of the kit set up and then I'll uh, identify all the cables and uh, get them plugged in and try and get it into a more playable uh, configuration. Because this has got the additional crash symbol on it, you do get a separate cable with it as well. Um, so it is tied up with a uh, tie wrap so just be careful when you are uh, getting this out, snapping it, cutting it, etc. Uh, let's get it all plugged in. All the cables are labelled, as we mentioned earlier, and it appears that they're all colour coded as well, just to make things a little bit easier. So, ride A and B. So, enjoy the view of the back of my head, well, actually, I'll just do it this way. With your Covid haircut. Mmm. Quarantine hair stews. So, we are on ride A, and socket A, find the green, find the green everybody, ride B. happy with that. I'm not, I'm not happy with that at all. Here, just be aware of that. If you don't want that to be knocking against that as you're playing, so just find my way here. As usual, the thing you're looking for is never immediately to hand. So, just make sure that you've got your screw the opposite way around so it's facing away from your sockets. Cable for Tom 3. Hello, child. 
Hello, Daddy. side just there just in case you get uh, confused by these other holes. Many it's always confusing which hole to choose when there's multiple choices available. Right. Mm. Not appropriate for kids when there's so many holes and you don't know which one to jump in. Orange is Tom one. Orange. A win, a win. A win, a win. It's worth remembering if you're putting the cables in, just be careful when you're uh, repositioning them because you're only going to have so much play in the cables without a lot of messing about. You don't want to plug something in and then be ragging the drums around into a new position because otherwise you may end up damaging the cables. The next one we're going to do is the snare. Find out what we've got. The snare is yellow. Doesn't come with a throne. No. No store, obviously, no snare stand because it's mounted onto a rack. Some of the others that I was looking at did have uh, their own actual snare stand. Um, we did see a few kits for uh, by a, a brand called Fame, which personally I wasn't familiar with. They were cheaper than this, and some had some really good uh, full kits. Uh, they came with headphones, thrones, snare stands, etc., um, but again, I'm not familiar with the Fame brand, unfortunately. Like, from what I could see, I couldn't find much information out about that brand. Um, going back to this, these your hi hats cables. You've got a blue for hi hat control, which is the bottom one, and then you've got a white one for hi hat, which is your top one. Right there. And in there. So one thing you're going to have to be careful of is your hi hat spinning like that. It's a nice tight knot. Yeah. Like I say, uh, when you first put things together, it's better to leave things loose until you're happy that everything's where it should be, and then tighten it up afterwards. Um, the last thing will be to plug in the multiple. Oh, how foolish of me! Here. Any additional crash. Wally? Yeah? Do you want to plug this one in? Where'd it go? See where it says crash 2? To crash to please. Excellent. So, the last, very last thing is going to be to plug in the multi core connection. The multi core is this. It's angled to, it will only fit on one way. Don't force it because it will just have a world of issues. Right, I'll make a bit of space so I can get behind it. And, uh, well, that's everything uh, plugged in and uh, beckled with to uh, the main degree. Uh, first thoughts, I'd say it's about 75% about of what I would want from an electronic kit straight out of the box. Now, for me personally, I tend to use a lot of double kick work. I'm having a few issues with the bass pad um, and some of the sounds you're getting from the cymbals 
figuring out how to get the different sounds out of, out of the cymbals. I don't know if it's to do with the zones or the velocity with which you're hitting. So I need to sit down and have a good read through the instruction manual and uh, figure that out. Adjust the sensitivity on the kick because what we're finding is when you're doing any kind of straight machine basing, for every eight you're playing, you're only hearing missing one beat out somewhere in there, which is a bit uh, frustrating at times. Um, but other than that, very good. I look forward to uh, seeing what else is uh, going to be able to come out of it. At the moment, I've got it on the very first kit, which is the Rock kit, as it says on the display. Now, there are ways to adjust the individual volume of the pads and stuff. I need to really get into the meat and potatoes of it to try and figure out how to edit all that stuff effectively. But straight out of the box, um, start with the hi-hat. You've got, uh, you can use your foot pedal to operate it. You can also do and get it to splash on the opens. And it's got several different positions so you can Some nice dynamic control on that. Uh, sensitivity on this is it's not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, with crash cymbals, they're both the same, but with this uh, rock kit, you've got two sounds for each cymbal, from what I can gather. You've got the normal crash sound, and somewhere in here is a splash sound as well. As I said previously, we need to I need to figure out if that's a velocity issue or if it's a zone issue with uh, the symbols as to how you get the different sounds. Uh, with the, the right hand crash, deeper sound, and you've also got a chime in there somewhere. There you go. With the ride, you've got the edge. In there somewhere. Bow. Nice bow. And you can choke everything as well. Which is nice. I like that. Um, the pads, you've got uh, the rims as well, as well as the skins to get uh, your sounds out. So, with your toms. because you're in the sound of the pad. Um, but that's a cowbell in there. Turn around. Again, the volumes are a little bit out on the pads. Sure, with a minor bit of editing with the individual packs, you can set your own user kits up and swap and change the, the effects around. Uh, I've also got a, a sample pad because this has got uh, the ability to have an extra floor tom on it. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to put the sample pad, the SPDSX, into this and then use that for a whole myriad of additional sounds and effects. Um, you can play through, um, plug an external device into it to play through. I've currently got my phone plugged into it and then have that through. You can adjust the mix individually for uh, the kit and the input in sound. One thing that I found, I was uh, playing along to some music earlier 
and I don't know whether it was a case of there was an issue with the cabling, the cable that I'm using to the phone, or if it's a case of it's just too much for it to take. But when you're really going for it, it the music just stops. I don't know why that's happening yet. As I say, I don't know if that's an issue with the, the module that isn't able to process all the pads going off at once and the audio coming through it, or whether it's uh, something else. Um, but I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it in due course. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs>